welcome, 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 welcome. Hey everybody, welcome to church today. It's good to be in church. I, I'm going to tell you, we've already had a, a message happen today. I don't think there's a better message that can happen than seeing someone obedient to baptism in Christ. That'll preach. And I... I told Margaret backstage, I said, hey, sister, you know, I do a lot of those baptisms. Oh, we'll go just a couple or somewhere. We'll go to the beach or we'll do it back in the pool or something like that. And that's great to have a, that intimate moment. But when someone's willing to get in front of the body of Christ and say, how want everyone to know that I'm in and I'm confessing him as my Lord and Savior, that will preach. If you've not been obedient to that, it's the first thing Christ calls us to. You call yourself a Christ father and you've not been obedient to immersion in water, then there's the message today, and we would love to talk with you after services about how that can happen. It can happen the day we got yeah. close, okay? Amen. Every day is a good day to be obedient to Christ, and so love to start the week off with that. Uh, we've had a great week. This is launch week here at the church, and so all of our, we're a small groups church, all of our small groups have gone, and you're like, I missed the boat on getting in on that class on Tuesday night, or that mom to mom, you haven't, you can dive right in. I want to make a special plug for tonight. Tonight at 6.30, we have a, a woman's event entitled Unwavered at 6.30 night here at church. It's going to be great. I'm excited about it because I've been experiencing it for two weeks at home, Okay. <laughs> My, my wife is teaching tonight. Mama can preach. And she's like, you, you can't. Now, you've got to write your own material, Johnny, for Sunday because this is mine. I'm like, but that's good. I, I want to use that. She's like, no. So I had to separate myself a little bit from that because I'm so excited about the message she's bringing tonight at 630. So dads, uh, husbands, encourage your wife to come. You want your wife at this event. She's going to be blessed. I'll be going to probably three fast food restaurants because I can't get my kids to agree on anything. <laughs> We normally go to Taco Bell twice. I can't explain it. It's probably going to happen. You'll see me there tonight. Seriously, drive by. We'll be there. Uh, I feel a lot of prayers in the room right now. Uh, I, I do. I, some of you have treated me poorly today. Uh, you have. You've been mean. Uh, and you, because of this jersey I'm wearing. And I, I've got to... I've got to tell you... This is what happens when uh, your pastor, uh, you know, talks a big talk for two weeks straight, right? I've got I've to own up to, and I lost a bet. That's why this is happening, because I'm a Bronco fan, and I've just, I've got I've to own up to it. If you're not in the sports, and you don't even know that a Super Bowl happened last weekend, God bless you, you didn't miss much, but you missed the same old thing, okay? Uh, what happened, we've got this term in sports called GOAT. It's not, it's not a farm animal term. It means greatest of all time. Okay, now, I'm not a Patriots fan. That's well documented. <laughs> but I can't deny nine Super Bowls and winning six of them would be the greatest dynasty of all time. I, I can't deny it, but can we just get over it? Okay? <laughs> be done with it. So I lost a bet. I'm wearing, wearing this jersey, but it's so appropriate because we're in the middle of a series that's for you. God's word always has something for you. It's actually a generosity series. It's teaching us from God's word how to handle our resources, our finances in a way that changes the way that we think about them and aligns it with God's word. And so we've got a goat text to look at today because we're looking at uh, the greatest of all time Bible passages on this. And you know what? We cannot talk about finances without talking about anxiety and worry. We, we can't separate the two because Jesus addresses both of them at the same time because the enemy attacks us in this area because we're not trusting on a sovereign God to be completely in control. God's teaching is very clear in the Old Testament and the New Testament. He says, trust me in all things and bring the first fruit, the first 10% of all the provision you have and bring it into the, the temple, to the house of God. And he says, if you do that, I will make the next 90% go farther than you can imagine. I will provide for you. And that is what God puts in there. But worry creeps into our lives. And so I call this the goat passage in God's word because uh, it is more Googled than any other passage in God's word. This is the most searched for passage in all of God's word. And it's found in Philippians 4 verse 6. Here's what it says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation... By prayer and petition, asking, uh, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. This is uh, 
Google because we have this issue with worry in our lives. Matter of fact, the American Medical Association has long ago declared that uh, this is a paralyzing pandemic. Uh, that's a mouthful of peas for you, but that's what they're calling it. Uh, it's paralyzing people, and it's a pandemic in our country because it attacks all sorts of things. It, it comes on us in the form of an emotion, uh, but then it turns into all types of things, headaches, heartaches, uh, stomach issues, depression. I found lung and joint pain are tied to this, muscle pain, fatigue, high blood pressure. I'm getting anxiety talking about anxiety, right? <laughs> Just looking at this list, I had to like quit researching. I'm like, man, this is serious stuff that is really paralyzing many of us, at times me. I, I, I want to put a disclaimer here. Uh, I am very pro-Christian biblical counseling in my life. I've uh, taken part of biblical counseling. It's, it's helped me in my brokenness and my story. And I, I would intend to do so in the future because it's good to sit down with someone who's trained to use God's word and credentialed and uh, they've given their life vocationally to that. So I am for that, but God's word has something in us right now. And he simply says, do not. The, the advice that God comes to us with is like, stop it. Don't, don't do this. It's an imperative in the Greek form. Uh, he says, just stop worrying. One of my favorite comedians, I'm a little old school, is Bob Newhart. Anyone remember the Bob Newhart show? Man, I love that guy. And one of his most famous sketches he does is he, he says, I'm going to be a counselor and I'm going to charge $5 for a five-minute counseling situation. And I, I'm 100% accurate, 100% of the time. I will solve your problem. Lay it on me. And so folks come to Bob and they he gets, takes the five dollars and he's like, "I'm going to start you right now." And they they give him their issue, and his reply is, "Stop it!" <laughs> right? Just just stop it! Right? Over and over again. Now I can laugh really hard at that, but here's the truth: it, that does. Some of us need like I need more than that sometimes. Like right? you just telling me to stop it doesn't always take me where I need to go with the issue of anxiety or worry in my life because worry is bad psychologically, and it's bad science for you. Uh, it's bad for you. Scientifically, it's proven that it's bad for you. You're never going to go to a doctor and talk about an ailment, and that doctor say, you know what we should do? i tell you what. I want to book you for a two-week return appointment, and what I, every moment from now until that two weeks, what I want you to do is I want you to constantly think about this and just freak out about it, okay? And we're going to come back together and just see if it's toned down not going to happen, right? They say the opposite. Like, whatever you do, like, live your life. Don't, don't get, you know, bogged down in this. Uh, we used to believe that the brain stopped developing by somewhere around six or seven years old. That we, as, as a society, as people, like, a lot of our science for many years told us that by the time someone is six or seven, it's pretty much set in, you know, how they're going to think and their attitudes, their mindset, because their brain has literally stopped developing. Uh, this comes from a guy by the last name of Xavier, Saint Xavier. Matter of fact, he planted 40 churches in India. He died in 1552. If you travel to the India town of Goa, you can see a church he planted there, beautiful church, lots of people, pilgrimage to see this church that he started. And you can go in and literally see his body like encased in a glass case. And people will go and see Saint Xavier and he is shaped modern thinking on the brain formation for almost 400 years, he is quoted by saying, give me the boy until he is seven and I will give you the man. Give me the boy until he's seven and it, it'll be done. It will be baked. Matter of, matter of fact, he said, you, you can put him through any circumstance you want or give that child to anyone else and it's done. Who that child will be and the way that their brain functions is over. It's already been done and decided this thinking uh, has impacted much of our education for over 400 years. But in the last couple of decades, we have what is called now new brain science. I would like to say it's actually just men starting to find out that God's word has always been true. It's, it's not new brain science. It's, it's the old book, okay? Uh, but new brain science, the name that they give for this new brain science is neuroplasticity. 
Now, this is not just synapses in the brain where you have a new thought and that electric current goes into new spaces because you're learning new. They take it a step farther. They say evidence is showing over the last few decades that through consciousness and deliberate thoughts, you choosing deliberate thoughts, our brains literally work, they rework themselves to accommodate our thoughts. It's not often I spend time in my office reading medical journals, okay? It's just not my thing. But this week I found myself doing that and I pushed away from my desk and I said, is this actually a pitch for waking up in the morning and doing morning depots? It literally sounds like a pitch for me to spend some time with God, you know, spending 30 minutes reading God's word, listening to God's word on the way to work, maybe journaling about what God is doing in my life, deliberately choosing a thought, uh, praying back to God his word. You know, I don't know what to pray. Pray his word back to him. That's something you can do, deliberately choosing to focus on God's word. Train your mind, change your brain is a book written by Dr. Sharon Begley. And I quote, she says, we can change the circuits that our brains use and entire sections of our brains will rewire themselves to begin to focus only on whatever our minds desire them to. Fascinating. See, a thought in your brain technically, physiologically, is just a protein. And when you choose to concentrate deliberately and focus on that thought, more protein is added. That mass begins to grow and take up real estate in your brain by choosing to focus on a thought or not. You will increase or decrease real estate assigned in your brain. You will change the space and shape and way your brain functions. I would say this, we need to take back our brains. Come on, this is the third service on Sunday morning. Are you awake? Are with me? You got to be awake. We got to take back our brains, okay? It's an exciting thought. Uh, I believe that worry is not only bad for us psychologically and scientifically, it's bad for us in the way that we think about God, our theology. It's bad theology. I, I would have three things that I would put in front of us to think about when it comes to worry and anxiety. One of them is from Jesus and two of them are from us. Paul. Christ writes in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25, what he has to say about worry and how he links it to our money, our finances. He says this, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Like, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And Jesus links our well being, our our sustenance, our provision, along with this idea of like what we have, like our wealth, our resource, our ability to take care of ourselves. And the, the truth that comes from Christ that I would pull up is we got to look around. We got to lift our head up out of our worry because it says stop it and just look around and see that God is in control. Have you ever been on the way to somewhere and seen a bird by the side of the road that's got the jitters because it needs a Starbucks or is like smoking a cigarette because he's just freaking out? No, they're good. They're good because they know God's got me. Have you, you ever seen a tree worried about it's losing its leaves or when the buds are going to come and it's just insecure? No, God is taking those and reclothing them. And who's been more clothed and more beautiful than the creation that we see around us? God says, lift your head up and look around. I have got it. I've got it in the creation. You know, I've got it in your life. You're not going to add a day to what I've destined your life to be. But what we're really saying is I don't know if God has done a work in my life. Has God done a work in your life? If you're here in this assembly today, if you're watching online, something good has happened because it's not me you're listening to. You're hearing directly from him. And this alone is one good thing where God has put you in a place to hear the very words of life right now. May the spirit of God affirm that to be true. And we look at God and what we're doing is we are denying God's control, his sovereignty. And we say, you can't take care of me, insert the way I want. And so I'm going to take care of myself. Maybe we're saying, I don't trust you. Probably the 
The, the worst version of this is, God, uh, I've seen how you've taken care of some things, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work to ensure that I can do so differently in the future, because I don't like the way I've seen you take care of some things in my life or some other people's lives, and I'm choosing another version, so I'm going to take control of my finances. We invite the healer into parts of our lives and Jesus comes straight out. He's like, I want to come into the deepest core. I want to be invited into your provision. And I, I want healing in your finances or the way that you think about me and the way that you trust me. The second thing that God has, he keeps rolling in the book of Philippians right in chapter four. And it's simply this. We need to control our thoughts. We need mind control that we are at the helm of. And here's how it's explained in verse seven. Here's what happens. Paul goes on, he says, the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. This new science, it's just God's old, long-standing, always true word coming, coming into play in our lives. See, the peace that you will have when you trust God with the first of what you have will make no sense to you or other people. Like, how, how are you going to pay that bill? How are you going to take your kid to college? How are you going to do this? And the peace that you have, you're like, I don't understand it. I can't explain it. It surpasses your ability to understand it. Here's the next thing it does. It guards your heart and mind. Do you know why that you need guarded? You need guarded because you're being attacked. What's worse than being attacked and knowing it is being attacked and completely unaware. And I'm afraid that we might be in a culture where we're under attack and we're just out for a joyride. And we gotta guard our hearts and minds and the way we do that is we trust all of our provision with the Lord. Amen. And we're unguarded. This is a famous text, and this whole text is talking about how do you approach God? How do you pray? What is your connection time to him? And there's something that's happening in verse 6, the preceding verse here, where we are taking our requests to the Lord, and we're walking into the Holy of Holies, and we're saying, God, I've got some things in my life, and it's been taking up real estate in my brain, and I've been worrying about it, and I want to make you understand, and I'm afraid that our attitude in that exchange is off. It's just off a bit, because we're walking up to the Lord, and we're like, hey, God, maybe you're not fully aware of my situation, so I thought I would take this opportunity to just bring you up to speed on my reality. My need and my version of how I would like you to supply my need. And then we do this crazy thing where we, we tell them all about our need. And then we say, well, now that you know, I'm leaving and I'm taking my need with me. And we walk out of the Holy of Holies saddled with that which we are to present to a king. And we're supposed to skip out of the holy holies without that on our backs, trusting that a good, good father has got good, good things in our lives, but we don't trust him. And so we leave these holy moments still saddled with things that we're meant to leave at the throne of God. Church, we gotta leave things in the holy of holies with the God that's in control. And that happens through us having our own minds under control. Paul says, here's how you do it. This is groundbreaking stuff. Like y'all, we need this. Hear this verse, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Here's what mind control, when you are controlling your thoughts, looks like biblically. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Pause right there. We're gonna come back to this. There are pretensions that are setting themselves up against you. And here's pretensions, ideas, thoughts that are contrary to God's word. Here's what they do. They come in all sneaky, right? And they look, they look true. They're not true. What they don't do is they don't go, surprise, I'm a bad idea and I'm here to ruin your life. Want to play? No. They sneak in looking true, and you get cozy, and you let them in, and you're like, yeah, that kind of feels true, and they are stabbing you in the back, and you need guarded, and you're not. Go back to this verse. Here's how he demolishes it. Here's how. We take captive every thought, and we make it obedient to what we know. What? That's heresy. 
No, that's not what it says. That's why you gotta read God's word. I can steer you wrong. Read God's word. We take it captive and we make it obedient to Jesus Christ. My kids and I, we like to watch TV. Living room, we're on the couch, we're watching TV. And can I tell you what comes up? Pretensions that are against the mind of Christ. You know what I love more than anything when we're watching something and an idea comes up in a relationship or how to handle money or some brokenness in the world and one of my kids goes, wrong. Like I have to stop them from doing it in the movie theater. They're dangerous. Like we're gonna get kicked out of AMC. They're just like, lie, right? They're bold. They're like, liar, screaming at the screen. People are like, what's this guy's kids? I'm like, they know God's word. It's weird, I know. It's... They're just ready to demolish every thought that goes against the mind of Christ. I mean, you know what kind of language this is? This is language of overcoming. This is language of breakthrough, language of power, language of freedom, language of victory, language of a kingdom that is here right now. This is the author of our faith language, the God who will make a way language, Jesus healer language. That's what this language is. Demolishing every thought in the world says, you know what, since third grade, you are never gonna change. You're gonna be the same. It's just done. You are who you are. Enjoy your life while you can because if you're messed up, you're just gonna be messed up. Live in it. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke that destiny for your life. It's not who you are. Amen. It's not why he died on the cross for you. He comes into your life and he says you can change. Yes. And you can retake your mind. How are you gonna do it? How are you gonna do it? Good thing God's word, when we open it, it just... It's just good. Guess what? The very next verse tells us. Hey, isn't that crazy? The next verse has the answer. Just keep reading it. Verse eight. Know God's word. Philippians 4, 8 says this. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Dwell on it. Be in it. So you, you get two thoughts and two thoughts come up in your mind and one is straight out of the pit of hell. And one of them is just something you gotta build your life on. And you're like, I'm gonna attach protein to that and let, let this one. And we wonder why we're broken. We've gotta invite the healer into brokenness. And we've gotta be able to uh, have wisdom to say, that idea leads to destruction and that idea will save everyone I know. Uh, this week, getting ready for that, I, I, I've just been repeat, repeat, repeat on just this healer song. Like, I, you, you can't ask me a question. My wife's like, honey, would you take the trash out? I'm like, we welcome the healer in this place. Because there's nothing else on the top of my heart because I'm gonna know God's word and I'm gonna train my mind and we're gonna take back our minds because we gotta be there. If not, you're not guarded. Are you not guarded? Do you not have peace in your life because you're not guarded and you're not ready? And I thought that this was a message series for me on finances. I'm so confused. We need healing in our area of finances. I think the, I think the enemy is attacking you and your family with finances because he wants to destroy you. He's not out to make your life less pleasant. He's out to destroy you. There's a big difference. We gotta look around. We gotta control our thoughts and we've got to know God's word or else those two thoughts we won't know how to choose between which one to dwell on and which one's going to transform our mind for the good of the kingdom of God and which one's going to destroy us so I believe that the fastest way to dive into these three pieces of advice from God's word looking around controlling your thoughts knowing God's word is obedience like Jesus said he just intertwines it trust me and trust me in your life the deepest part your provision when we recognize God in the first 10%, the other 90% will go farther. I know that the man math makes no sense, but the spiritual arithmetic has powerful results. You are not going to understand it, but you will be guarded with peace in your mind and in your heart when you truly trust God with your provision. When you came in, you were handed this little piece of paper. Piece of paper simply says, uh, I welcome the healer into, and then it's blank. It's because uh, we don't want to fill in for you what, 
where you're broken and what you're inviting the Holy Spirit into. So I want to invite you into an exercise right now uh, in the last few moments of our service. I want to invite you to pull that out. If you don't have one, we've got ushers right now that are ready to bring one of these to you. I really big. I, I, I'm asking everyone just to grab one of these and have it. I think it's going to be significant in your life. If you don't have one, raise your hand right now. They're bringing them. If you need a pen, they'll get you a pen. I'm asking you to pull that out and write on it right now. Spirit of God, what is it that I need to invite you into? Yeah, just keep your hand up. They're gonna make their way around the room. Spirit of God, living God, come in your truth and speak to the deepest part of my heart right now and tell me what I need to invite you into and I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna do this activity. I'm gonna write it down. You know what? Right now, you don't need me to tell you what to put on here. You don't, you don't need me to say it for you. You don't need the band to sing it for you. Your ear needs to hear, your mouth needs to feel, your hand welcome the spirit of the living God into your brokenness. We got, come on down here. We got a ton of folks right down here. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. If you need one, we got time. I know we've all booked one hour to experience the living God this week, right? I, I mean, are you booking the times when the enemy attacks you on your iPhone? Like, what? Well, you're only supposed to attack between two and three. Like, come on, we're having church. I, I want to be a part of a church that gets this. We boast in our weakness. I need the healing power of a real King Jesus. I need it. I desperately long for it. I need it every hour. God's word says in Psalm 107, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Have you been redeemed? Has God done something good in your life? Say it. This verse, Philippians 4, 6 says, come and put your request before him with thanksgiving. We thank him at the same time we put a request before him because faith is being sure that God is gonna do the good things he said he would do even though he hasn't shown us how it's gonna work out yet. That's the definition of faith. We're in obedience, thanking him for it and asking him for healing all in one package. Some of us have been walking out of the Holy of Holies and walking out of the throne room of God, carrying our requests. And he's like, leave it with me. Leave me your sorrows and leave me your brokenness. I don't want to be a part of a church that's not broken. I want to be a part of a people that say, I need Jesus. There's no better group of people to be in than a people that got their head screwed on straight. You know you got your head screwed on straight when you understand your situation in life. I need Jesus. Do you need a healer in some way in your life? I want to be counted in that number. I want to be a part of that group of people. I want to stand with friends and say, I need them. I need them. I need the healer in my finances. I need him in my marriage. I need him in that exchange relationship with the child. It's not talking to me. I need healing and only he will bring it. Here's what I believe. I believe that some of you have written something down on a piece of paper and it's about you and the healing that you need. But I believe this, it's not for you today. It's for someone else to hear. I believe that Right now, there are folks in this room that are waiting on you to be obedient and to stand up and to, to talk about the brokenness that you have. Paul says this, I will boast in my weakness because in my weakness, he is made, our God is what? He's strong enough. When unbelievers, if you're here today and you're an unbeliever, you wanna know how we, we have a real God? Because we don't walk around acting like we got it together. We walk around on our knees saying we need a real God. And he shows up in our lives. And when we get together, we boast in weakness because God is strong. Now, wait a minute. I want nothing to do with theatrics. I'm not about getting all pumped up and us having a rah, rah, rah thing. I don't have time for it. I don't want to get all excited for you. I want to get excited with you, okay? And the early church, when they got together, they loved and encouraged one another to good deeds. We're not up here to perform church. I'm here to be with you and have church, to experience church. My brother Rami, who goes to this church, when I get together with brother Rami, he says, let's stop talking about God like he's not in the room. Woo! It's possible for you to come into a room where the healer is and you not have an experience with that healer. Just be around people who are having experiences with the healer. There are no coattails faith. My faith isn't your faith. You don't get to borrow it. You have a personal relationship with Jesus because you need to know him. You need to be obedient to baptism. You need Jesus. 
but your personal relationship isn't for you to hide under a bushel. No, let it out. If you can't let it out here, you're not gonna let it out anywhere else. So here's the, here's the group project, here it is. I'm asking that we could just line up in this aisle over here and line up in this aisle over here. We've got folks that are going there right now. They've got a microphone and we are going to have a concert of admitting that we need him. We are going to have a concert of inviting the Holy Spirit and the healer Jesus to our brokenness. We are going to identify with one another's brokenness so that we can identify with the healer that rescues us. I want to be with him. I want to, to recognize, we're gonna leave the lights on. We're gonna worship with the lights on. I, it's getting crazy, I know. Because I need to look across the room and be encouraged by you and to know that you need him like I need him. So I'm gonna invite you to stand right now. And as the band leads us in the first part of this song, I'm gonna ask you to step out in boldness and take your paper and take it to one of these aisles and be ready to speak into a microphone. Let's welcome the healer into our brokenness. Move now in boldness. Take your sheet and go stand in line. Let's cry out to our God. on the screen or you could just turn around. We're going to start over here and we're just going to hear, just read one thing because we want to get through everyone here. Just about two or three minutes of inviting the spirit, inviting the healer. One thing here and then we're going to go over here. We're just going to go back and forth. Church, invite him. Begin. I welcome the healer of marriages into of everyone in this place, everyone outside this Amen. building. I have longtime friends that are Christians that are facing divorce because of alcohol and adultery. Their children are affected. They are devastated by this. Uh, I welcome our, our government leaders, the healer, into our government Amen. lives. Amen. God, our president is facing so much opposition, and he loves our country. Thank you. I welcome the healer into the lives of the unborn, the ones that are going to be aborted Amen. because of this. Amen. Thank you. Let's go over here. Thank you, thank you. I welcome the healer into my son David's life to break every chain of addiction and stronghold in his mind. And praise you, God, that you are with me and with us here. Amen. Woo. Amen. I welcome the healer into my sloth and my lethargy. Amen. Let it be. I welcome the healer into my mental health, my finances and economic growth, motherhood, and most importantly, my sobriety. Amen. Amen. I welcome the healer into my depression about my family breakup and divorce. Amen. I welcome the healing into my life to have God grow my faith and trust in his guidance me to stop worrying about things I have no control over. Amen. Amen. 
I, I welcome the healer for every area that women are being deceived by the enemy. And I want to say that they need to be strong and find the Lord in their lives. Amen. Amen. I welcome the healer into the heart of my sister and my family. Let it happen. Let it be. Help the healer into my place and help me to be helped with my mental illness. I welcome the healer into my life and my husband's life over our anxiety of his health. Amen. I thank my Yahweh Father for loving me, and I welcome him into my fear that he cannot raise my children as well as I can. Take control, God. Amen. Amen. I welcome the healer into my heart to relinquish control and give into God, and I welcome him into my home for it to be a place to find God's love, God's peace, and a place to give God's hope. Amen. Amen. I welcome the healer into my anxiety and grief. Amen. I welcome the healer into my state of happiness, my business, and my health. I welcome my healer for the salvation of my loved ones. Let it be. I welcome the healer into my marriage and my home. Um, I welcome the healer to the spirit of my husband once again to be the leader and guide of my home. Amen. Let it be. Let it be. I welcome the healer into my daughter Holly's life and my fear and anxiety of the future. I welcome the healer into my body. Let it happen. I welcome the healer into the hurts of the past, anxieties of the future, and into my marriage. I welcome the healer into my marriage and into my spiritual life. I welcome the healer into my body and into my husband's body, and I will have what you have promised. body and through my struggles of foster care. Amen. I welcome the healer into my soul, my marriage, my family, my finances, and my work. Amen. Amen. Brother? I welcome the healer um, into healing my body and spirit and the salvation of those that we love. I welcome the healer into my heart, eternal peace for our family members that are lost. Invade them all, Jesus. Peace that only comes from Christ. I welcome the healer into healing my spirit, my soul, and into helping my daughter and son-in-law find the way to the truth. Amen. John. I welcome the healer into my lustful eyes and the lack of confidence I have in your power. I welcome the healer into my heart and into my family's heart. And may we share God's love always with others. Amen. Amen. I welcome the healer into my life, my family's life, and my anxiety of not knowing what will happen tomorrow, but trusting that God will make a way. Woo! I welcome the healer into my heart. I welcome the healer into my mother who suffers from alcohol. Welcome the healer into my daily work anxieties. Amen. Amen. I welcome the healer into my brokenness and my insecurities so that God can make me the man that he wants me to be. I welcome into my priorities so I can do the things that he wants me doing for my family and my children. And I welcome into all my relationships and most of all, I welcome him to bring unity into our church. Amen. Mike. I welcome the healer into my family and to the high school students I teach on a daily basis. Many Good of them are Amen. far from you, Lord, and I, I pray for them. Amen. I welcome the healer into my parenting, into my attitude, into my obedience, into my family, into my relationship, into our home, and our heart and mind. Amen. Amen. Chris. I welcome the healer into my financial decisions, 
my prayer life and into being a better spouse. I welcome the healer into my grief and depression and into the lives of everyone who's lost a loved one. Amen. I welcome the healer in my daughter's life, my anxiety about the future, and my family and marriage. Amen. I welcome the healer into my brother and my father's heart and my family that they have the long road ahead of them. Thank you, Lord. I welcome the healer into my fear of losing another baby. I welcome the healer into my desire to fix other people because it's not me that does the fixing. I welcome the healer into the relationship with my husband. I pray that he knows him in a deep way and that it helps our family become stronger. Right over here. I have the almighty healer in my body, and I pray for healing for my kidneys, and I pray for salvation for my brother, Rodney. And isn't it encouraging just to know that you're with people that need Jesus? That's what church is. So uh, I, we're going we're gonna to close our time together just by crying out the words of this song one time. I want to ask you, and if, you didn't, if you're like, I just don't want to talk, I get up there, and that's, he hears you. Right, Romans chapter 12, he hears the groans of your spirit and your heart and it's being put in before the Holy of Holies right now. So I just take it out and let's lift them up right now. Lift up these cards and let's invite the healer into our brokenness one last time as the church, as the band leads us. Lead us in this song, guys. Let your living waters fall on sons and daughters we
crying out as we begin this week. We are a people who are broken and we need you. And we have been riddled with worry and anxiety about our provision, about what we will eat and where we will go and what we will wear. And the list goes on. But you are here. And we look up and we see you and we recognize that we can take control of our minds and that you will change the way we think if we simply know your word. And we take captive every thought and we make those thoughts obedient to you, Christ. And so show up in every circumstance and find us a thankful people who are welcoming you as the healer into our brokenness. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey church, we want to thank you for being here. If you're new,